In this series, we look at what the world might look like, how things will change after we have beaten coronavirus, which we will. Today, our guest is John Hutton. John Hutton is the director of the Luke Hoffman Institute based in Geneva. Actually, the world of the coronavirus throws up a number of opportunities. It throws up, for example, the opportunity for the world to get to grips with the massive illegal trade in wildlife. Uh, and given that it's very likely that the origins of this particular um, coronavirus uh, were in the wet markets of part of China, uh, where people and uh, domestic uh, livestock are mixing with, with wild, uh, wild animals, um, uh, and that they have at least temporarily been, uh, been banned, uh, I think there is the opportunity to extend that up the supply chains and to try and remove illegal wildlife trade. And that would be a major conservation success. But at the same time, of course, uh, the coronavirus has caused enormous damage. One example, which is worth talking about, I think, is, is the impact on the global tourist uh, industry. Now, uh, many conservationists over the last 40 and 50 years, and indeed national governments, have invested heavily in tourism uh, as a tool to create incentives for, for example, uh, gorilla conservation, tiger conservation in India. Uh, and, uh, and this is a, a massive contributor to conservation in Africa, for example, whether they are photographic tourists or tourists perhaps slightly more controversially come to hunt animals but, but pay communities for the privilege of doing so, that, is, that has all disappeared overnight. I think that one of the results of that, and which has been un, unforeseen because you know, whoever planned for a total, total wind up overnight of the global tourist industry, but, but people, for example, uh, in, in the part of the world I know best, where you know, I've spent most of my life in, in uh, Southern Africa, the uh, people, there's a cost of living with wildlife. It's actually no different here in Switzerland where I live now. We have wolves, uh, right next door to me there are vineyards and we have wild pigs and badgers which the farmers are really not very happy with. So wildlife comes with costs. And uh, where the benefits disappear, in this case the benefits of the income from tourism, all you're left with is the cost. And what we're seeing is people having to revert to killing those animals for food because they have no alternative and you can imagine uh, the byproducts of that the skins and the, the durable parts the horns you know, and so on finding their way into illegal trade either for medicines or, or, for, or for food or for other purposes so you know that has been an unforeseen and, and probably in the short term at least uh, catastrophic uh, viral uh, contagion like this this is the dark side of nature Charles Darwin told us you know that nature uh, is the world's greatest innovator and as this this virus has arrived and, and may well mutate I and mean, we don't know how, how it's going to work out but the reaction to disease and pests uh, in human society is usually not very generous towards nature um, we, we tend to try and sanitize nature and there is a danger that the, the global response is of that kind the sort of kind that we, we saw uh, building when there was avian flu uh, back in 2016, uh, which uh, in, infected domestic birds, but also, of course, wild birds, ducks, swans, geese. And there was a move to say, well, let's eradicate all these migrating ducks, swans, and geese across Europe uh, and remove the problem. So we don't know what the human reaction will be, so that, that could turn out to be uh, really unpleasant. But on the other hand, there's an opportunity, and it's about developing narratives and communication, I think. And the, the, the difference between the two is, 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 is wafer thin. But there is also the possibility of creating a narrative that what we need to do is look after nature better. Uh, we need to protect the integrity of nature so that it is, is not disturbed, because a lot of these diseases essentially emerge out of the, 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 the catastrophic disturbance of nature. Uh, it's not just about species, it's about the ecosystems they live in. So I think there is a chance to develop a strong narrative around ecosystem health, uh, around the need to protect and restore uh, natural systems, forests and these uh, really important systems. They're also important for carbon and things, of course. 
So uh, I think there is a chance that the, the biodiversity agenda is strengthened, uh, but it's not inevitable and we're really gonna have to work on that because uh, the, the human reaction, I, I fear, could be quite negative.